So if we start with this first equilateral triangle, let me paste in the formula for a general equilateral triangle. And we'll need a lot of room for this, so let me make it a little bit smaller. And we know the side lengths are S, which we can just replace with X here. So the total area after step zero, we would have the square root of three multiplied by S squared divided by four. And then for step one, we just have to notice that we have three triangles, which we'll be finding the area of, and each of these triangles have smaller side lengths. These side lengths were divided in three from the original, which means that the base is now S over three for each of these equilateral triangles, which we can just plug into our formula, meaning that we have the square root of three over four still, but we have S over three and we'll square that. So let's put that in parentheses. We have S over three and we're squaring it. And that will account for what we have after step one. Now let's take a look at what we have after step two. We will be continuing this. I'll put the plus sign down here. And for this one, notice that we have everything from step one, but we added four new equilateral triangles on each of the three sides, meaning that we have 12 new triangles. But to notice the pattern, we can write this as three times four rather than 12, but they are equivalent. And for these new triangles, remember that we started from this step one and then split each of these sides into three, which means that each of these new side lengths here is one third of the side length size from step one, meaning these are S over nine, or this base right here of the equilateral triangle is S over nine. And we can write that in by plugging it into our formula. So we have the square root of three over four, and we are multiplying this by S over nine, and we have to square this. And that accounts for everything in step two. Since again, we're just finding the area of each of these smaller triangles and then multiplying by the number of those triangles, which are 12 in this case. And for step three, notice that we are just adding the area of each of these tiny triangles here. And let's start by figuring out how many we have. We have four of them here and notice that for one side of the original triangle, we have four sets of those four, meaning we have 16. And then we have three of those sets. So 16 times three is 48. Or it's really four times four times three. And we'll write it like that just so that we can notice the pattern. Let me write that in here. This is for the third step. We have three times four times four. That's just the number of the triangles. And then to find the area of each triangle, we just have to remember that for step two, going to step three, we take each of these side lengths and put an equilateral triangle in the middle of it. And these new side lengths are one third of the side lengths from step two, meaning that we take S over nine and divide it by three and the base of each of these new triangles is S over 27. And let's write that in. We still have the same formula, but we're replacing X with S over 27, meaning we still have the square root of three and we are still dividing by four and then putting S over 27 in parentheses and squaring that. Now, we could continue going and in fact, let's do one more step just so that we can verify the pattern and notice that for step four, we will still have this three since every step after the first one has a set of three since we have three side lengths that we're dealing with. But notice that every step of the way, there's an extra factor of four. We multiply by four once, then twice. So for this step, we will multiply it three times. And if you wanna look at a picture of the fourth one, you can certainly draw that out for yourself, though it's quite tedious. 
or just think through the logic. For each of these little pieces, they will gain four equilateral triangles added onto it. Meaning that for step four, we can write three times four times four times four, which I'll write as four cubed. And for the side lengths, we are dividing that by three, meaning we will put S over 81 into the formula here. And we still have the square root of three over four, but now we have this S over 81 squared. And if you want, you can continue doing this, but at this point we can notice the pattern. The next one will have three times four to the fourth and root three over four, since that's part of the area formula, and then S over 243 squared. And it continues for infinitely many terms. The area of this, again, has an infinite amount of things that we have to add up. And in the next video, we will actually go through how to deal with this formula and how to simplify it.